It's Payam here from Niche, hope you're well. In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, mortgage overpayments. Um, as interest rates have risen, uh, a lot of people have been looking at their current mortgage products and seeing how they can reduce their mortgage to try to deal with the shock of uh, potentially going on to new, uh, new higher rates or if they're first time buyers or next time buyers, when they're looking at purchasing a property, um, we, it's good to have a look and know where you stand in regards to making overpayments so you can reduce your mortgage balance uh, sooner. So let's kind of have a look at this in practice uh, on a mortgage illustration. So we've got a mortgage illustration here. Now this is the document that outlines all the conditions uh, or most of the conditions in regards to the product. So it talks about the rate, it talks about your monthly payments, it talks about your mortgage broker, who your mortgage broker is or the mortgage lender. It gives you details of you know early repayment charges, which we've covered in a different video on section eight. But what we're interested in is the flexible features uh, section, which is in uh, section nine. So section nine is all about what that product uh, entails. So the first section within this is the portability aspect. Now, some products, this is important, some products are portable and others are not. If they are portable, uh, it will tell you within the flexible features, section nine of the mortgage illustration. So in this particular product, it says you have the right to transfer the loan to another property. This is subject to conditions referred to below. If you are basically, you can transfer it, but it's dependent on various things. Right? Now, one of the things is obviously, what, you know, if you're on a certain loan to value, are you going to keep to that loan to loan to value on the new property? What is that loan to value going to be? Also, what type of property it is? Um, will the lender lend on that property? And that's important. Uh, also, are you looking to raise uh, the mortgage to a different amount? So, are you going to do a port? as well as do capital raising. So all of those things are um, some of the conditions that need to, um, uh, need to be met. So it's vital if you are looking to um, port the property. And the reason why would you port the property rather than just paying the mortgage off? Well, basically, you don't have to pay the early repayment charge, okay, in, in most cases. So you keep the same mortgage, you keep with the same lender, and what you're going to do is you're going to move that. So if you're going to sell a property, you could potentially move that to a new property. Okay, um, so that's one of the reasons why portability could be a good option. Obviously, you need to get uh, mortgage advice around that, whereby does it make sense for you to port the mortgage and do a further advance? Or does it make sense if you don't have an early repayment charge just to pay that down and, and then go for a new mortgage? But the flexible features in round portability are all in here. Okay, and it says you do not have the right, so you can't actually port it from HSBC to Halifax. That's seen as a remortgage. Um, so it's important to have a read through that. What I'm going to talk about here is really around the overpayment f facility. Now, majority, not all, majority of residential mortgages and some buy to let mortgages have got a overpayment facility. What that is, is basically, and generally it's about 10%. Of the mortgage balance okay um, or that could be the mortgage balance that started where you started with or every year okay that your what your mortgage balance is and you can pay up to 10% of it over and beyond your monthly repayment so if you take out a mortgage for I don't know 200,000 pounds and you're paying 700 pounds a month you could pay up to 10% of 200,000 pounds on year one and 10% of uh, uh, whatever the balance is year two and year three and year four um, and you can reduce the mortgage now some people can do that as a lump sum some people choose to do it as a lump sum so 10 percent of two hundred thousand pounds is twenty thousand pounds essentially you can overpay so you could do that as one big lump sum if you sell a house if you get some inheritance if you have some money and you could do that and the balance will reduce or you could say right I'm just going to overpay it by, I don't know, 300 pounds a month on my direct debit. So whatever your direct debit is, say it's 500 pounds or 700 pounds, you then say, I'll set up a direct debit of a, uh, of a thousand pounds and that will overpay it unto how much you can sort of, you know, depending on how much you can afford. So it's a really good feature. It's a great feature to get used to. I use it myself with a direct debit. So I work out every year. Um, 
I don't know how much I think I can overpay my mortgage by, and I'll just set that as a direct debit because I know if the money comes into my account, it'll be spent. So that's how I do it. You know, I have done lump sum overpayments in the past. It's always worth you contacting your existing lender once you are with them to find out when you can overpay it, pay and what your limits are. Um, and what are the dates you can overpay? Some year, some lenders work it from January to January. Others work it from a tax year. Others work it from the day you started your mortgage. So it's so important you have that discussion. A lot of people now have got access to lender portals, which actually gives you those inf that information. Also, within the f within the flexible features, it will outline if the product's got any other incentives. So this product uh, with HSBC, for example, has got a free valuation, okay? So the way that works is they're paying, the lender is paying for their basic valuation costs, okay? Um, so that's a free incentive. Now, sometimes when they do that, you may not even have access to the valuation report. It's really for the purposes of the lender. The lender just wants to make sure it's the right property price and it's the right type of property they want to lend on so it's always worth um, getting your own valuation done whether that's a home buyer survey or it's a, a full building survey and that could be done at your own cost now some lenders will allow you to pay additionally and get a home buyer report on top of the free valuation so when the surveyor goes around from the lender you get the free element and then you pay the additional amount for a home buyer report or building survey other lenders, they just say, look, we're just paying for the free valuation. You're better off getting your own home buyer survey done yourself. So that's the flexible features. Other things that could fall within this is free legals. If a product, you know, if it's a remortgage, sometimes they come with free legals. Um, other things is like cashback. Maybe the product comes with a £250 cashback. That cashback facility is often, I get this quite a lot, when is that cashback facility paid? Um, generally, it's either paid on completion to your solicitor, okay? So on completion of the mortgage, when the lender has given you the money, they'll just give you that £200 or £300 on top of that. Or they may put it into your account within 30 days of completion. So again, different lenders have got different strategies around that. But hopefully you found this useful. But as always, if you are not sure about anything, do give us a call and we'll be try to give you as, as much assistance as possible. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.